tonight. And we're going to um, start off with our first guest, who ironically is going to talk about election anxiety, amongst other things, Dr. Lee Richardson. Dr. Richardson, welcome to Nightside. How are you tonight? I am good. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you very much for joining us. So you're a licensed professional counselor and founder of the Brain Performance Center. Um, but there was an article, I guess, in Forbes Health that my producer saw about election anxiety, politics, and mental health. So is politics basically driving people crazy? I guess that's the opening question. And there's a one-word answer for that. Absolutely. Oh, I thought it was going to be yes. Okay, that's even more. <laughs> Okay, so other than the, the interfamilial disputes, which clearly exist within our country, within everyone's family, I'm sure, why are people so hot and bothered about it? Well, they are. Actually, it's cyclical. Every four years, people get upset about the the election. But this year, I think it's really different. Think back. We didn't even know who was going to be running for the election. And is you know... President Biden didn't run. Who was going to run? Oh, no, he, he ran. Wait, wait a sec. He ran and he won the nomination of the Democratic Party. So, and then he was uh, uh, counseled by some of the senior advisors that maybe he should step aside. So we have a, a new candidate. Yes, you're absolutely right there. So it's been kind of a, a wrinkle that we haven't seen in a long time in American politics, if ever. And and I think that while he did run and did get the nomination, the American public started doubting him way before that. And that's uncertainty. And with uncertainty comes fear and the unknown. And I think that this election, we're going into it, and it's it's a really difficult time if you look at what's going on around us worldwide. That plays into our, our consciousness. And when you look at what's facing this, inflation, I mean, there's, there are many things other than the good old family battle as to who's right and who's wrong. And that lives on for generations. So, so okay, I, I think you have categorized the problem very accurately. I deal with this every night of the week. Well, not every night of the week, but most nights we do something on politics. Tonight I don't think we will be doing anything on politics other than this interview, uh, which is merely, you know, you, you're kind of around the edges and you're tangential to it. And uh, I, I, will, I will tell you that I hope that this election on November 5th has a decisive winner. Uh, because I, I don't want to go through what we went through in 2020. So the question is, in the meantime, other than not listening to the news, what should people do? And maybe that's what they should do. <laughs> go right ahead. Well, I think listening to the news, uh, a little bit of it, is a positive thing. I think having it streaming 24-7 is not. Uh -huh. And I think using social media as your knowledge base and and reading comments and letting those comments influence you is not it's not a that's not positive behavior and you know we all know who we disagree with right well we there's still some people who, who claim even as late in in the game as we are who are theoretically undecided so there are some people out there who are still trying to figure it out <laughs> for better or worse well and you make you make a really good point because there's also some people, the survey that you mentioned cited 27% of people are excited about the election. So you're right. There's, there's a, a lot of variables out there. And how those all come together peacefully and decisively, I think, is, is the question that we're all trying to, to project the answer for. Well, we'll see in, in in about two and a half weeks. Tell me, the, you are the founder of the Brain Performance Center. What What is that, and is that something that my listeners can be in contact with, take advantage of? Tell us about the Brain Performance Center. Absolutely. The Brain Performance Center was started in 2009, and it deals with behavioral health issues, which we're all experiencing today as a result of the, the election. It's anxiety, it's depression, it's stress, it's dealing with that neurodivergent population. And all of that is, it's just a dysregulated brain. And there are ways that we can train our brain organically 
to change. And for any of your listeners that would like to learn more, we have the good old-fashioned website, thebrainperformancecenter.com. We also have thebrainperformanceinstitute.co for organizations that are looking to create psychological safety. And, you know, it is okay to not be okay, but it's not okay if you don't do something about it. Yeah. Um, do, you, do you have like little tests or analysis that people can kind of do at this Brain Performance Center so they can figure out if they are okay? Well, we do it more scientifically. We actually record the brain waves oh. and we compare them to a database and we see, you know, it works off the, the bell-shaped curve. Okay. What's, and it's age-specific and but where is your brain within normal within normal limits? So do people, and, in order to take true advantage, do they have to physically be where the brain performance center is? I'm not exactly sure what what state or city you're in. We're in Dallas, Texas. Okay. So, and there are there are organizations across the United States that do the same thing that we do. Oh, okay. So Everybody you could even refer people on. I guess is what I'm hearing you say. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And I would encourage anybody that wakes up and thinks, you know, oh, I don't know if I want to do this today or, oh, not another day. Why is this so hard? Give me a call because it can be. You calm that brain down and lie. it's a game changer. Well, I would say I would say it all starts with the brain one way or the other. <laughs> you wake up in the morning and the first thought is, oh, the alarm clock, I got to get up. I hear you. I hear you. Dr. Richardson, always appreciate talking to you. I think We've talked before, and I hope we're going to talk again. Thanks so much. 